I want to talk to you a little bit about Site C Dam. And I'm deeply involved in uh, fighting against the Site C Dam because their issues are exactly the same as the issues we're facing in the Fraser Valley and the issues you're facing here. The very, very best farmland in British Columbia for growing vegetable crops, not grapes and orchards and stuff, that's the Okanagan. But for the vegetable crops is the Fraser Valley, the Peace River, and southern, uh, uh, West Van uh, southern Vancouver Island that gets that marine climate that comes up the Gulf of Georgia. This is the warmest climate in Canada in this region, and that really helps. The Site C Dam will flood 30,000 acres of the best soil in Canada, and their, their summer season is pretty much the same as we have here. They have a shorter growing season, but they've got hugely long days, and they grow watermelon and cantaloupe and, and, and stuff that actually we don't even grow here, that, they're, that they're, they're able to grow up there. And there's enough land there to feed a million people. And I've calculated out if it's being farmed at 3,500 pounds of CO2 going into the atmosphere, putting into the soil every year, it's sequestering into the soil every year about 50,000 tons of carbon dioxide, which is taking out of the atmosphere. You flood that land, you're filling the carbon sink. That's more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere that we have to worry about that's, uh, that's causing climate change. This, the Site C Dam area is half the distance from here to Los Angeles. So you get, a, get away from the, the trucking and the, the fuel and the, 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 the climate miles that, the, that you have to bring your food. People just haven't been able to get around the idea of bringing our food from the north instead of from the south. Well, the climate has already changed and we can bring our food from the north instead of the south. They tell us that the Site C Dam is, was, or they did tell us, was to provide power for LNG. But along with the coal, there's a disincension to build or need more LNG in Asia too, because guess what? They're converting to solar and other, other means of alternate power. And if you build an LNG plant, do they really want to buy power off of us through BC Hydro? They're piping natural gas from elsewhere in BC or Alberta, and they're using uh, the, the generated power to convert the natural gas to liquid natu natural gas, they can do it just by burning their own natural gas. And they produce their own, uh, their own LNG. So they don't need Site C. The latest one we've heard is, well, maybe we'll sell it to Alberta and they'll stop burning coal in Alberta. Well, I say to Alberta, well, maybe you should start using solar power too. What's happened in California is amazing. 500,000 acres went out of production in California last year because of the continual drought. And the rain that's coming now isn't going to help. The, the, the rain doesn't soak in the soil. It just washes everything away. And I contacted one of the almond farmers down there through the internet because they had ripped out their almond trees, which use a lot of water. And they have put in solar panels, and he's making more money with a solar farm selling electricity to the grid than he was growing almonds. So why not go solar? Well, the other thing they've suggested, and this is what I really wish I could show you, is that we need the power for the urban areas of British Columbia. And before the announcement of the Site C Dam a couple of years ago, Metro Vancouver was looking into generating our own power. And we've had a program going with, with a Dr. Shepard from UBC to analyze what it would take to produce the electricity we need in Vancouver. And he's come up with a plan and he's got a map of all the buildings in Vancouver that, that presently could have solar on the rooftops. And just those buildings alone could produce enough solar power with the amount of sunshine we get for 900,000 homes or households, because some are apartments. The Site C Dam produces enough power for 450,000 homes. So, so just for renovating and putting solar in the city, we can produce double the electricity that the Site C Dam would produce, and we, we can maintain all that food producing land. And he says it would come in at probably half the cost of the electricity as well, which is utterly amazing. He says something like 19 cents to 45 cents a kilowatt hour. 
We're already doing some new things in terms of biogas. And he analyzed that all, uh, you've got to save the farmland to do this, that the livestock in the region, if you took the animal manures from cattle and pigs and turkeys and chickens and ducks and put it into anaerobic digesters and you collected the methane from it, burned the methane, it produces carbon dioxide, but you get compost for the soil. That's enough to, to generate power for 17,000 homes, cow power. And in Richmond, we've already got two projects going along those lines. Uh, one is we've uh, put in geothermal power, and uh, we're drilling holes in the ground, putting pipes down on the ground to get the heat from the ground to warm houses. And we've just done this for the last two years. It's our own district energy system owned by the city of Richmond, and we've already created an, enough heat to, to heat 12,000 homes. And we could spread it all across. We could do every home in Richmond over a period of time. Metro Vancouver itself has, already has a waste to energy plant that burns excess garbage, mostly plastic. And it produces enough power for 16,000 homes. But Dr. Shepard went a little further. He looked at other areas, run of the river plans in some of the rivers around here, 7,500 7, homes. Industrial heat recovery, uh, heat from sewers, heat from buildings and industries, another 7,500. Biomass from forests, putting it through anaerobic digesters. The same way, instead of if it rots in the forest, it gives off the methane and it goes into the atmosphere and creates climate change. If you put it in an anaerobic digester, you burn the methane, the carbon dioxide goes off, but you put an equal amount of carbon dioxide back into the soil. And so there's zero uh, addition to climate change. And he's estimated from forest biomass 26,000 homes. And so it totals up that we could do in the region 986,000 homes from energy alternatives without even looking at wind, which is another possibility. And, and so that's the argument. And the reason I'm telling you this tonight is because BC Hydro has said they don't produce much farmland uh, uh, produce in the Peace River, they grow hay. And we don't need the power from the cities. Uh, we, we'll get this. We'll be the sole marketer. We're not going to look at any other alternatives. If you go to Souk, they've already got a 75 kilowatt solar powered photovoltaic cell system at the Souk First Nation. And they've put in uh, solar heating for half of the homes. Um, Borealis Geothermal, a company that wants to do geothermal power, Hot Springs, Harrison Hot Springs. Like else, hot, spring, hot springs, various hot springs around the province, you've got hot water below the rocks. And they're looking right now, they're in, actually in the process of building two uh, 15 megawatt plants up in the North Country. And the other area where you can get power is from, believe it or not, the Columbia River. I'm old enough to remember, Sig probably re remembers the Columbia River Treaty, where we built dams in the, in the Columbia. We actually helped all those farms in the Columbia by controlling the Columbia River waters. We sell them power. But one of the clauses in the deal is when we have got want the power back, we can sell it to ourselves at a lot less than we can produce new power. So we don't need the Site C dam at all. One other thing I want to tell you about, and this is something you can take home with you to your own city council. 